everyone, I'm Matt from Harman Technology and in this video we're going to look at some of the equipment that I'm using to set up a dark room at home. Before we start talking about equipment, let's just take a minute and talk about some of the spaces that can be used. Now there's a misconception that you need running water or that it needs to be a big space. The bigger the space, the more comfortable it will be for when you're printing. And if you've got running water, then obviously that's great and more convenient still. However, you don't need a big space. The dark room that I'm using here, my temporary one at home, is a five foot by five foot, roughly a meter and a half squared, small bathroom. It has no windows, so it's easy for me to make light tight. It does have running water as well, so I have that convenience. But I simply set up a camping table in there. I have a wet area and a dry area and I'm perfectly then set up to start making prints. Now any room can be used in theory, but the more convenient is the ones that don't have windows or they have windows that you can easily cover up through blackout blinds or blackout curtains, through thick cardboard with gaffer tape. And you can also use rooms like sheds, basements, garages, uh, utility rooms. So there are lots of different options within the comfort of your own home. Starting with trays, these come in plastic or metal varieties. These are Patterson ones. This is the 8x10 and this is the 5x7 equivalent. There are other sizes as well. They normally come in a set of three, so you'd have one for your dev, your stop and your fix. I like to have a fourth, which I use as a little wash bath. Now this is particularly useful if you don't have a sink or access to running water in the room that you're using as a dark room. This will allow you to put your print into the little wash tray after you've taken out the fixer and give it a quick rinse before you then take it to a sink to give it a proper wash. You'll notice that my paper is slightly smaller than the tray. So in this case, these are an eight by 10 sheet in an eight by 10 tray. And that is good because that allows the liquid to fully cover the paper, but it also means that you can get the paper in and out of the tray easily as well. Sticking with trays and if your dark room is particularly small and you're struggling for surface area to put your dev stop and your fixed trays, you can opt for something like this. Now you'll find these in stationary stores and again they just work in the same way. You can have a developer stop, fixer and wash tray but in a stackable unit. When choosing the right paper for you there is a lot of different choice. You've got resin coated or fiber based papers. You've got cool tone, neutral and warm tone varieties. You've got different surface choices and obviously different sizes as well. So on our website, ilfordphoto.com, there's lots of information that will help you make the right choice for you. This is one that I tend to go with. This is the Ilford Multigrade RC Deluxe. This is the glossy variety. I also like it in pearl. You'll notice that the color here, pink denotes glossy, whereas the silver will denote pearl and each of the different papers will have a different color there as well as a different logo. Next, we're gonna look at chemicals and some of the equipment that you need to prepare them. Um, I've got here a set of three cylinders. I prefer to have three cylinders rather than one um, because that way I can prepare my chemicals at the same time um, rather than have to wash it between them. Um, the chemicals here in this case, you will have a thousand milliliters of liquid. And in the case of this, so for example, it's multi-grade developer, which is a great all round developer. Um, this is a dilution of one plus nine or one plus 14. So at one plus nine, you would use 100 mil of multi-grade developer, 900 mils of water. You would stir it using um, a stirrer and then that's your chemical prepared. It really is that straightforward. Um, to keep the temperature of the water in line, you would use something like this, which is a Patterson thermometer. It has the temperature you need even indicated on here, so 20 degrees C or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So the preparing of the chemicals is actually very straightforward, very easy. It doesn't need to be done in the room that you're going to use as a dark room. So if space is limited, you can prepare in your kitchen, for example, and then carry the cylinders through to the room that you're using. In front of me are a few additional bits of equipment that are really useful when darkroom printing. Now you can see I've got an easel. In fact, I've got a couple of easels. 
This is a Patterson single format easel. So these are available new. Um, they're effectively a bit of plastic with a very narrow frame around them. And that allows you to make a good eight by 10 print, but it's quite restrictive in terms of its format. Whereas a more traditional easel looks something like this. It will have different arms that will basically enable you to frame your image and adjust the size of the image that, or the paper that you're using. So something like this is a much better option, but more expensive obviously, whereas the Patterson one is a great way to get started. It is possible to make your own easels as well. I think um, there's a video by Lena Bessanova, which we'll try and link to, which is a really good way of doing something uh, affordable and creative yourself. In terms of some of the other things then, I've got a Patterson triple timer. So what you'll need is a timer that doesn't emanate any light when you're in the dark room because your prints are still developing. Um, what I use this and how I use this, I set a timer to 30 seconds. So my paper in the stop bath goes for a minute. So I will use it twice, 10 seconds, which I'll count in my head when it's in a stop bath. And then I'll set it for another 30 seconds when it goes into the fixer. So this is a really useful device when working in the dark. Now I've got here a Patterson Micro Focus Finder. And what this does is you place it on top of your easel and using the light from the enlarger with your image in the holder, you can actually then make micro adjustments so that you are focusing on the grain and that way that your print will be sharp. And then the other thing that's quite useful to have is an air blower. Always before you put your negative into the holder, give it a blow with this to get rid of any dust or marks. And that way that when you're printing it, they won't show up in the final print. The key piece of equipment that you're gonna to need to make a print is an enlarger. Now what I have in front of me is an Intrepid enlarger. Uh, this is a prototype. It's just gone through its Kickstarter. Um, and has been successfully backed. So this will be available um, to everyone else, probably from around autumn 2021. So I say this is a prototype, but I've been using this and it's fantastic. Now I wanted to show you this particularly, and there are plenty of other options available for enlargers, but this is really, really good for home darkroom printing, particularly if it's gonna be a temporary home darkroom, i.e. something that you set up, use for a few hours or a few days, and then take away and store until next time you use it. And the reason being, as you can see, is it's tiny. Now I typically use when I'm printing at work, I'm gonna be using something like this Kaiser Enlarger that's much bigger. And there's definitely benefits to having that. And if you're having a more permanent setup at home, you may want to look to invest in something like that because there's definitely pros to that. But at the same time, there's a lot to be said for a device like this. It's small, it's compact, it's lightweight, and it does a lot of the stuff that those bigger and larger's will do in this small form factor. Now, key to that is this device. This is the control unit for the enlarger. And as you'll see, it will allow you to do black and white as well as color printing if you're that way inclined. Um, but also it has the multi-grade filters effectively built into this. So you don't need to use filters above or below lens filters on the head itself. It also has a little safe light built in as well. So that's a quite a nice little feature of it. Now you'll notice with this Intrepid enlarger, it doesn't have a stand that you would get from a big bulky enlarger. Now that means you're gonna need something like this, which is a copy stand. This is a negative supply one or a tripod and you can mount it onto a tripod and print that way. It's worth spending 10, 15, 20 minutes before you start printing with one of these devices to make sure it's level. You can use something like a spirit level that you'll pick up from a DIY store and just make sure both the enlarger head and then the stand, particularly where the, the easel is sitting on the stand that they're level. And that way you'll get the sharpest prints across the whole sheet of paper. The enlarger itself uses film holders and can print 35 mil and 120 with 120 going up to six by nine. It's also got an LED light source as a head, which means that you can actually use it as a scanning device as well, either using this or using another form of device to hold your negatives.
And to round things off, you're gonna need a safe light. Now this is a good option. This is the Arza Margo safe light. It's USB powered and it also has adjustable brightness through this switch. So it's a really nice affordable option for safe light. Now again, if you shop around, there are other options. Patterson, for example, have a good safe light option. And as I say, there is something built into the Intrepid Enlarger that you can also use. So that concludes a rundown of some of the equipment that I use to set up my dark room at home, which has enabled me to get really nice prints. Um, I hope you found that useful. There are more videos on our YouTube channel about how to make a print, mixing the chemicals and some of the various techniques as well. So please go check them out and let us know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.